So in almost every respect, a PhD is not just different, it is the exact opposite of the system you're used to. And the skills that got you into a PhD are not the same skills that you need to complete one. And when you think of it this way, it's not that surprising that people who've done exceptionally well at all the previous levels of the education system struggle when it comes to a PhD. What is a PhD and why is it so difficult? Even though this is a fairly basic question, a lot of students and academics don't have a clear answer. And that matters because the way you think of a PhD, what it means and what it's for, affects how you approach it. When it comes to defining a PhD, you will often hear people say it's an original contribution to the body of knowledge. And this has some truth to it, but there's more to it than simply being original. And this definition also focuses on the output without really telling you anything about the process. You might also hear people say that a PhD is about becoming an independent researcher. And I'm not really a fan of this definition because I don't think there's any such thing as an independent researcher. Yes, you need to be able to make your own decisions and conduct your own research, but you also need other people. Most professional academics collaborate and consult with others, and you shouldn't have to figure it all out on your own. You might also hear people say that a PhD means you're the world's leading expert in your subject. And if that's the case, then I'll give mine back. And sometimes you will hear metaphorical definitions like it's a driving license for research, or it's a journey, or it's a marathon and not a sprint. But these metaphors don't really tell you very much as they're so open to interpretation. So we need a definition that gives us some insight into the process and what's required, while also differentiating it from other types of qualification. And one way to look at it would be to say that a PhD is the highest level academic qualification you can get. And if we run with this idea, if we view the education system as a pyramid with a PhD at the top and primary or elementary education at the bottom, once we get past compulsory education, as you go from one level to the next, some people leave, and those who choose to and have the grades to qualify move up. And this means that it's usually the people who've done very well at all the earlier levels of the education system who then go on to do PhDs. But the problem with seeing a PhD this way is that there is a fundamental difference in the way a PhD is structured compared to everything else that's come before. So if we think about a typical undergraduate course structure, there will be a set syllabus, usually consisting of well-established knowledge that's been tested and accepted by the field, with clear boundaries between what you're expected to know and what you're not. And this information will be carefully structured and sequenced to help you learn. There will also be a clear timetable where everything is scheduled for you, and then you have standardized exams where everybody in a class takes the same test. You then build up a cumulative grade over time so you always know how well you're doing and whether or not you're on track. So if you're smart and you show up and you do what you're asked to do, you'll probably do quite well. But in a PhD, there is no set syllabus. And instead of working with carefully sequenced, well-established knowledge, you have to deal with the vast, tangled, contradictory mess of academic literature. This literature is not written to help you learn because it's written for an expert audience and it assumes a high level of prior knowledge. There is also no clear timetable. You may have some key deadlines, but on a day-to-day, week-by-week basis, you have to decide what to focus on and how to manage your own project. And instead of standardized exams and a cumulative grade, at the end of a PhD, you have to defend your own individual work in front of a panel of experts. And instead of being judged against your classmates, for a PhD, your work is judged 
relative to existing work in the published literature. So essentially, you're up against global rather than local competition. So in almost every respect, a PhD is not just different, it is the exact opposite of the system you're used to. And the skills that got you into a PhD are not the same skills that you need to complete one. And when you think of it this way, it's not that surprising that people who've done exceptionally well at all the previous levels of the education system struggle when it comes to a PhD. So instead of thinking of a PhD as the top level of the education system, I think it's better to think of it as the bottom level, the entry level of the professional academic system. And the purpose of a PhD is to develop and then demonstrate the skills of a professional academic researcher. Now, you may have no intention of ever becoming a professional academic researcher after your PhD, but this is what the system is set up for. And thinking of a PhD this way takes some of the pressure off. So your PhD is not the completion of your education. It is not the culmination of your life's work. It's not about becoming the world's leading expert in your subject. It's just the beginning. And it's not about showing how good you are. It's about learning and developing skills. And this is a process that will continue long beyond completion of your PhD, should you stay in academia. And if you don't stay in academia, then it's your skills that will have value to a potential employer rather than the specific content or results of your project. So the question that I would like to answer in this course is this. In the absence of a clear structure or syllabus or timetable, how can you structure your own PhD project to help you develop your skills?